Hi everyone, it's Chris at Cork and Crown back in the cider shed. Gonna try some Perry today. Um, yep, yeah, some more stuff I brought back from my Herefordshire slash Somerset trip uh, last week. Uh, this one is from Comadic, Jeremy Harris, tiny producer in Herefordshire. Tiny producer. Um, here it is the bottle, there you go, Comadic Perry on the back. Oh, this is a 2018, so he said it took longer for this to sort of mellow. It's quite an acid herring, quite an acid juice that the, the thorn produces. Um, so I just want to give it more time for it to mellow. And it just uses steel's no oak, so it's just pure fruit, very pure fruit flavour. Um, there's a little bit about thorn on the back of the bottle. It says, a very old, pre-1676 variety producing a dry pétillon perry with citrus notes. He also says, treat as a wine to complement fish, risotto and cheese. Well, let's test that theory, shall we? I always find it very interesting when people say, drink with cheese. You see at the back of wine bottles and all sorts of things, you think, what sort of cheese? I mean, it's ridiculous to say cheese in a way. I mean, sorry, Jeremy, I do like it very much. But, um, but there are so many different sorts of cheese that just to say have with cheese is, is, is a no-brainer. Fresh goat's cheese, blue cheese, hard cheese. I mean, they're all different. Washed rind cheese, you know, all sorts of different. Cows, goats, sheeps, you know. There's, a, a, I mean, there's thousands of different sorts of cheese and they're all distinct, particularly when you get into like unpasteurized small production. I mean, not only are they distinct, but every single batch is distinct. You know, with, with say making cider or, or wine, you have a yearly vintage. Yeah, so once a year you harvest your fruit, you press it, and that's it, that's your vintage. With cheese, uh, animals need milking all the time, you know, so you're making cheese pretty much every day. Um, unless they're, they're, unless they're like goats or sheep and you're milking seasonally so they go dry off, but still when they're lactating, you're milking, making cheese every day. So, you know, if, you've got, if you're milking cows and you're milking them 365 days a year, and it's unpasteurized milk, that's 365 vintages a year, potentially. And they'll all be subtly different. That's the way it works, okay? So, um, so yeah, sorry. I read that and it made me go off on one. I'm probably going to go to Jeremy. I think he's great. And I love his stuff. So, let's give this a go. So, I did try this in Herefordshire. But I tried so much stuff, I have no recollection as to what it tasted like. Um, not because I was drunk, just because I tried too many things and I couldn't remember. So, I just opened that. I mean the merest tint of the sparkle. I mean this feels like it might be actually dry, but it just say pétillon, which means just very slightly sparkling. Okay, let's pour it into the glass. Now a not very clean glass. I have to go and grab this glass because um, I broke, I came in with another glass and I broke it, so I had to run in the house and get another one. It's not as clean as, as, a, as, a, as I thought it was at first glance. No matter. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Really light colour, really light, which is what you expect from Perry's generally. But this has almost got a hint of, I said this before, like a Pinot Gris. Gris means grey in French, and like gr gr Pinot Gris is almost like a greyish pink hue to them. And this has just a hint of that. I really like that colour. So it's not just like, it's not a straight gold, there's a pinkish grey hint to it, which is really, really pleasing. There's also a little bit of stuff floating around there, so this is definitely unfiltered. Um, edible stuff. I hope. Okay, let's let's give it a sniff. Ooh, really bright nose, bright fresh nose, really good. But it smells quite. There's like a lime, cordial, lemon, perhaps a sort of a stone fruit thing going on. I'm not going to say pineapple. I want to say like apricot. Apricot jam, apricots. That's kind of the thing I'm getting off the nose. Nice. Interesting. Delicate, but very pleasing. Let's have a taste. Mm. Woo! <laughs> Squeaky teeth. Bit of tannin in this. Don't think I get, tend to get so much tannin in pears. I saw but... It's got a nice soft tannin on the teeth. Super acidity. Super acidity. 
like my mouth is watering yeah lemon lime absolutely but really refreshing man like a laser beam of citrus let me try another have a bit more yeah the nose it feels like it's going to be softer and rounder that apricot thing that storm fruity thing but then you drink it hang on No. So, mm. actually, on the very tip of my tongue, I get that apricot. It's like apricot, but with absolutely no sugar in it. It's hard to imagine because you know, apricots are quite high in sugar. They're sweet. But it feels like like a, an apricot that's had all the sugar extracted from it. And then the back of my tongue, it feels, yeah, not like, not like, um, not really like malic acid. It is much more like a lemon lime lemon and lime acidity mm, really refreshing really crisp really interesting if you're into dry ciders or dry wines like uh, dry wines like Picpoul de Pini which is something from the south of France it's just you have like oysters it's from the coast of the Mediterranean I think you really get into this it's just like really crisp this is a hot weather summer cider absolutely let's try it with some cheese got a couple of Thorns, actually, I've got a thorn from um, Ross and Y to try as well. It's quite exciting, which is also done in. I think it's also done in all casks. We'll find out. Anyway, maybe I'll do that one. I'll do do that one tomorrow. I think. Okay, let's try this. Bit of cheese. I think it's going to be too acid for this. I think it needs something richer. Almost gets away with it. Almost gets away with it. Well, come to sitting and sweating in the shed at high temperatures, because this is where I've been leaving it. Um, I was really building to make lemon now. Um, rich, sweet, intense. Burnt butter. Um, custard. There's some great flavours in there. And it's so rich that actually this acidity now is it's actually, it's, it's, it's almost required to just to balance it out, cut to the sweetness, cut to the richness. Maybe a tad on the acid side, possibly. But I tell you what, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining at all. So it does go with cheese. Nice one. Okay, guys, I'm going to cut this one short ish, eight minutes in. Pfft, short for me these days. I don't have to go on. All right. So I'm going to be back with a new film next, probably tomorrow, actually. And I will do the. Thorn from Ross and Y, because then we'll do Thorn consecutive tastings, which is interesting, isn't it? Interesting to me anyway. And it's my thing, so I can do what I like. Okay, so until I see you again, thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>